In 2030, there could be a nuclear reactor on the moon. Not maybe, not theoretically. NASA has already picked the companies. The contracts for prototype designs are signed. The countdown has begun, and when it powers on, everything changes. Right now, three companies are building early reactor prototypes. China is racing to beat the US there. And here's the crazy part. The reactor is designed to run for 10 years straight. No refueling, no repairs, just constant power in the most hostile environment humans have ever tried to colonize. But here's what nobody's talking about. This isn't really about the moon at all. Quick question, how long do you think night lasts on the moon? 14 days, two full weeks of complete darkness. Solar panels work during the day, but when night comes, they're useless unless paired with massive batteries or fuel cells. NASA studies show that powering even a small habitat through that period with batteries alone would require so much extra mass and cost, it becomes highly impractical. That's why NASA is turning to nuclear power, fission reactors that can deliver continuous, reliable power through the darkest and most hostile conditions. Here's what's really happening. NASA's Artemis program plans for 40 to 100 kilowatts of continuous power on the moon. That's roughly what 40 average homes use, but on the moon it can run life support, communications gear, labs, and even mining tools. The reactor design is compact still a few tones of hardware, including shielding and radiators. In 2022, NASA awarded about $5 million each to Lockheed Martin, Westinghouse, and IX, a joint venture of Intuitive Machines and X-Energy, which also includes partners like Maxar and Boeing in that venture, to design these systems, which must survive launch, lunar landing, and operate reliably for up to 10 years without refueling. The official target is deployment by 2030, but it remains an ambitious goal rather than a locked schedule. China announced their lunar base plans for 2035, Russia's partnering with them. India just landed near the South Pole. Whoever gets reliable power first basically owns the moon's best real estate. Why? Because the South Pole has water ice. Turn that into rocket fuel, and suddenly the moon becomes the gas station for Mars missions. Think about it. Launching from Earth costs $10,000 per kilogram. Launching from the Moon, almost nothing. The country that controls lunar fuel production controls deep space exploration, and it all starts with one nuclear reactor. The reactor splits uranium atoms. Same process that powers submarines, just shrunk down. But here's the engineering nightmare. On Earth, we use water to cool reactors. The moon has no water, no air, nothing. So they're using heat pipes filled with liquid metal. The heat travels up, gets radiated into space and cycles back. It's like a giant radiator floating in a vacuum. The uranium, low enriched, basically impossible to weaponize. Even if the rocket exploded on launch, the radioactive material stays sealed in multiple protective shells. But the real challenge is lunar dust. This stuff is a nightmare for machinery, microscopic jagged glass shards that cling to everything thanks to static electricity. During Apollo, it scratched visors, fouled suit seals, clogged instruments, and even caused allergic reactions. NASA's solution. They're burying the reactor. Dig a hole, drop it in, cover it up. The lunar soil actually becomes shielding against cosmic radiation. Problem solved except nobody's ever dug a hole on the moon before. So add that to the to-do list. Day one with nuclear power. We can run 24-7 operations. No more shutting down for lunar night. Year one, we're mining water ice, producing oxygen and hydrogen. A lunar base becomes self-sufficient for air and water. Year five, we're manufacturing rocket fuel. Mars missions can refuel in lunar orbit, cutting costs by 90%. Year 10, with enough reactors, we're 3D printing entire habitats from lunar concrete. The moon becomes a construction site for deep space missions. But these goals are part of NASA's roadmap and concept studies, not firm deliverables. Here's the plot twist nobody sees coming. The tech we develop for the moon solves problems on Earth. Remote Arctic bases, disaster zones where the grid's destroyed, deep ocean exploration, even Mars colonies, they all need compact, reliable nuclear power. The moon reactor becomes the prototype for energy independence anywhere. 
And politically, the country that proves safe, portable nuclear power could own the future of energy, not just in space, everywhere. Let's be real, though. This could fail spectacularly. The rocket could explode. The landing could fail. The reactor could malfunction. One design flaw, and we've got a dead reactor on the moon with no way to fix it. NASA's potential backup plan? They could send multiple reactors. If one fails, the others keep running. It's expensive, but cheaper than sending repair crews. Meanwhile, China's groundwork mission, Chang'e 8, launches in 2028, making it an early step toward their nuclear-powered lunar base. So here's the question, and drop your answer in the comments. If you could build anything on the moon with unlimited power, what would it be? Because in five years, that question stops being hypothetical. The reactor could land in 2030. The power turns on, and for the first time in human history, we'll have a permanent foothold beyond Earth. Not because we visited, but because we stayed. The nuclear age in space starts now. The only question is, who gets there first?